In this video I will show you how I built this self-sustaining aquarium with lots of life in a pickle jar. It all started when I found this really big jar of pickles in a store. I knew immediately I had to get it. So I took it home and struggled for quite a bit to open it. But finally, after almost impaling myself, finally I could taste the amazing aroma of pickles. The struggle has already paid off. So I got this really nice big and clear jar and started building the aquarium. For this project I am following the Wallstead method, which means putting a layer of soil underneath gravel or sand. Since I didn't have suitable topsoil, I reused the soil from this dried bonsai. After picking out the bigger chunks of roots and dirt, which may decompose or lead to anaerobic processes in the soil, I filled the jar with the soil. This layer provides nutrients for the plants long term, and is very useful for self-sustaining aquariums. I just made sure not to add too much of it, to avoid eutrophicating the water and causing algae blooms. To keep the soil from floating to the top, I added regular aquarium gravel on top. Here I made sure to raise the gravel layer in the back, to create an effect of depth. This also increases the surface area, so more plants can be added. Because the gravel looked a bit boring on its own, I decided to add a little bit of sand for some variation in texture. Now to the hardscape. For this I used two awesome pieces of driftwood. They are already waterlogged, so they won't float to the top. Wood provides an amazing surface for biofilm and beneficial bacteria in aquariums, which is especially important in this case, as I won't add a filter for this setup. This makes it extremely important to add a lot of surface area, so that the bacteria can filter the water. This is also the reason why I added a few lava stones. Due to their porous surface, I have a very large surface area, which supports this effect. They also stabilize the wood. If I would add the water now, everything would be messed up, and the soil would be mixed into the gravel. So I placed a piece of plastic bag on top of the substrate and carefully added the water. The water is a mixture of tap water and distilled water. I could probably use 100% tap water, as it is aquarium safe in my case, but I didn't want to add too many nutrients from the start. Let's get to the most important part of a Wallstead aquarium, the plants. The plants not only oxygenize the water, but will also act as a filter. Because of the nutrients in the soil, you need plants that grow quickly and absorb a lot of nutrients this way. Otherwise algae blooms will occur. Especially the Eludea is a fast-growing plant and is perfect for this setup. I planted the larger plant in the back between the two pieces of driftwood and added smaller plants in the front. The smaller plants I will add are Dwarf Hairgrass, Monte Carlo, Bolbidus Fern, Hydrocotyl, Bucephalandra and Anubias. Especially the Bolbidus, Bucephalandra and Anubias are very slow-growing plants and are therefore in theory not suitable for this project. But I'm confident that the other plants will suffice to achieve balance in this system. These plants are also perfect for the foreground, as they stay small and won't cover everything too much. While the dwarf hairgrass and Monte Carlo can be placed in the substrate, you shouldn't plant the Anubias or Bolbidus. If you bury their rhizomes, the plant will rot and die. So I just fixated them with the stones. After the planting was done, I filled the jar all the way up and removed the floating debris. Floating plants also draw a lot of nutrients from the water column, and are therefore also perfect for this project. I got some frogbit and salvinia. Also some duckweed found its way into the jar. Now onto the inhabitants I will add. These are a few different types of snails. One big and old Ramson snail, and a bunch of smaller ones that I couldn't clearly identify. I placed them on a frogbit leaf and they were slowly sliding into the water. This little guy right here needed some help to find its way, 
He is just too small. So the Grimson is immediately exploring. Another species I want to add are Ostrogoths. I took them from one of my cultures by sucking them into a pipette and putting them into a small cup. These are extremely beneficial little crustaceans that help cleaning any surfaces from algae and biofilm. They are also extremely fun to watch when they swim around. Here you can see me pushing them out of the pipette into the jar. And this is a finished pickle jar aquarium. I won't add a filter or heater. I won't do water changes or feed anything. The snails and ostracods feed on algae and biofilm that accumulates on all surfaces. The Wallstead method is extremely helpful providing nutrients for everything. The big plants filter the water and provides the animals with oxygen, while at the same time using the poop of the animals to get new nutrients. This way we achieve a nutrient cycle without the need of adding additional food. Everything I do is providing some light in form of either indirect sunlight or LED light and some water top-offs every now and then. Other than that, this is a fully functioning and self-sustaining ecosystem. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to show your setups, have questions or just want to chat, feel free to join the Discord. Have a great day.